hello it's sunday it's 12 noon i'm sat at the kitchen table i'm here to service you i've got my nightie on i'm not wearing a bra and i've no pants on but i'm here and it's really important that i find the motivation today more than ever because if i do sort of like succumb to how i'm feeling then it just plays havoc with my mental health. So, hello, it's Sunday. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be watching me from. It's Sunday service, your Auntie Nelly's here. Do not panic. I am going to be doing Sunday service. I am completely and utterly exhausted. Um, so, God knows how today's Sunday service is going to be because I feel like I can't actually string a sentence together. Can I just say as well, before um, I start the Sunday service, when your Auntie Nelly is feeling extremely tired like this, I do sometimes slur my words. Do not panic. It is just part of my condition. So there we go. How are we? How are we all? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Where are you watching me from? Give me a like, give me a love, give me a share. Don't panic if you share me and you think your little ones are going to watch. It only goes to people who are 18 and over. There may be strong language throughout this show and hopefully there'll be no talk of a sexual nature because it's Sunday service. So we're hoping that we keep them for Wednesday night's night time with Nelly. However, the odd one now and again does slip in. So, yes, if you've been watching my stories this morning, I'm completely exhausted. Um, I'm just extremely tired um i'm also quite confused really confused actually because um with the announcement of um the latest announcement here in the rosendale valley is you can have your hair done yeah you can go to gym yeah you can go out and eat yeah you can go to pub you can go anywhere where there's a fucking card reader but you can't go around to your mum's and she can't come round to yours so I'm supposed to be having my double glazing fitted tomorrow. I'm having new windows and doors. So I phoned company up and I said, listen, we're not allowed in each other's houses. He said, oh, workmen are, and sent me the government guidelines. So I can have every fucking Tom, Dick and Harry in my house as from tomorrow, ripping windows out, putting new windows in, making my fucking front room window into patio doors. But my mum can't come in for a cup of tea. Not that she would anyway, because she's in Crete. So I've had lots of messages. There seems to be lots of flower pots on holiday in Crete saying, is your mum in Stalis? Yes, she is. So if you see her, give her a shout. Um, yeah, so that's it. Hello, Val Grass in Norfolk. Hello, Angie Smith. Hello, Jeanette Cook. So yeah, once again, um, I think it's really important to show that some days we have no motivation. Some days we feel extremely exhausted. And it's about knowing when to take that day of self-care. If you are completely exhausted, then yes, rest. But today it's more about my brain. My brain is feeling very demotivated. So I could have said, I'm ever so tired. I'm ever so, I'm ever so, see, this is what happens. I'm ever so tired. I need to take a day off. But then that day off can turn into two, three, four days off. And then the week would be wrought off. So today it makes sense to me to do some disservice and to crack on because I can always rest later. So there we go. There we go. So shall we start with the very, very first Sunday service of Antonelli's Sunday service, the tired edition. I've put that as being tired today is one of my superpowers. What's your superpower? Give me a comment, let me know, give me a like, give me a love, give me a share. Hello, Margot in sunny Portugal. I just shut back door because it's pissing it down here at Rosendale Valley. Oh well, can't change habits of a lifetime. So, Auntie Nelly, I need your advice. Advice is what I give. However, however, what advice I'm going to give today, being so tired and not feeling myself, um, let's see what we can do. But I know that my gorgeous flower pots will jump on and help me out should they need to. Dear Auntie Nelly, I need your advice. I'm married to a man who is dad to my youngest child, 10 years, and stepdad to my older three, 13, 14, and 18. He works hard to pay the bills, but when we book holidays, it's always around fishing. He pays. 
he fishes and the rest of us are bored. And then we are classed as ungrateful for being bored. The kids are just not interested in fishing. I say it's not up to them to make him feel horrible. But he says, we do make him feel horrible. Are we being unreasonable? For context on holiday, he'll fish 18 hours in 24. What can we do? So, I'm not interested in how many kids you've got, whether there is or there are not. He works full time. He books on holiday. You're going fishing because that's his hobby. Is there nothing at all in where you go, where he's fishing, that you and the kids can do something? Maybe you could go one day and join in in the fishing. It could be quite good fun. I don't know. I've never been. And then rest at holiday. Maybe he fucks off with his fishing rods and then you go somewhere with kids and do summer and then meet up at lunch or meet up at tea time. And maybe if he catches a fish, you could cook it for your tea. Oops, if I've upset any vegans there, I apologise. Uh, but why does it have to be where we go on our holidays that we have to do exactly everything the same some people might like the beach some people might like the pool some people want to go and climb a fucking mountain it's your holidays and don't feel pressured because he's paid for a family holiday that you all have to sit at the side of the fucking pond while he's fishing there's lots of things that you could do lots of things so i think it's about being um considerate to each other's wants and needs communicating that and coming to some sort of compromise i don't think there's anything wrong with going on a fishing holiday but if that's not what you want to do i am sure in that area you should not have to sit there for 18 hours while he fishes doing fuck all you can go off and do your own little thing and then meet up at tea time i don't know if that's good advice but there you go. And if you're really fucked off with it, so listen, love, you're paying all this money to take us fishing and we don't like fishing. You fuck off on a fisherman's holiday and I'll do days out with kids. Simple as. I don't even think this is a problem, is it? It's not really even a problem, is it? It's not. That's not even a problem. So I am um, moving on. I'm going to move on because that's not even a problem. Hi, Auntie Nelly. Hello, my gorgeous flower pot. Just let you know, all these messages are anonymous. If you want Sunday service or night time with Nelly, write into the page. I'm 25 and live with my mum and now my mum's boyfriend moved in about six months ago. It was really weird as it's just been me and mum since I was three. I was happy my mum had met someone, but I wasn't expecting him to move in. We argue all the time and he's always trying to be like my dad and tell me what to do. How old are you, 25? Tell me what to do. I ignore him most of the time, which just causes a lot of arguments. Mum says she feels caught in the middle. And I know he's not an horrible person, but I think her loyalty, her loyalty should be with me and she should back me up. I just need him to move out so it's just mum and me again. How can I make this happen? You can't. You can't make this happen. Mum has moved on in her life. She's grown new to a 25-year-old woman woman you're not a child you're a woman and you're still living under your parents roof whether it be your mum your dad mum dad whatever mum's now decided it's time for her to have a bit of her own life and she's met a partner that she thinks she can see things going with and he's moved in so i think here it's all about having that communication as a family what are your boundaries sit down at the kitchen table as adults and tell him you're not my dad you've moved in it's been me and mum since we were three you know, we need to know our positions in this new life. So he may think, you know, it may be difficult for him. He may think that that's what he has to do. He has to tell you to clean up behind yourself. And you should be doing You're fucking 25. Uh, you've been here a quarter of a century. You're a grown ass woman. So he shouldn't have to tell you things like clean your stuff up, make your tea, tidy your room, what time you're going to bed. Um, Turn telly off, your music's too loud. Shouldn't have to be like that because it should all be about knowing your boundaries as you live together and respecting each other. So have that conversation. Please communicate. And don't be thinking for one moment that you need to get rid of him so it's just you and mum again. You're 25 year old, what are you going to do? Get rid of him and then it's just you and mum again and then you find the love of your life and you leave mum on her own. That is not fair 
at all. I think you're being very selfish. I can understand, I can completely understand that you're feeling like, hang on a minute, where's he fucking come from? And he's upset the ambience, but, but your mum is not your property as you are not your mum's property. You are 25 years old and if you really don't like the life you're living under that roof, move out, move out. You are 25 years old. Life is for the living, not for arguing. And it's not fair to your mum to feel like she's piggy in the middle. And I don't think she's taking sides. So when you say, oh, she should be backing me up. No, she's just trying to keep the fucking peace. So please, please, please communicate. Everybody understand the positions within that relationship. It's a new thing for all of you, okay? There might be a little bit of tension here, a little bit of tension there. Communicate, have the conversation, talk it out, hash it out as adults. And if you find you can't come to a compromise, then move out. Doesn't mean to say your relationship with mum is going to be any different. You're always going to be your mum's daughter and your mum's always going to be your mum. But you've got to let your mum live her life as well. You are a 25-year-old female and it's time for you to move on. So either put up, shut up or fuck off. Simple as that. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Dear Auntie Nelly, I had a daughter when I was 14 and gave her up for adoption. I was too young. But I thought about her every day and have never stopped feeling guilty. A few months ago, my daughter found me through social, social, so oh, fuck off, through social media and we began emailing each other. My husband and son know nothing of this. I would love to meet my daughter, but I don't know how to tell my husband and son that I had a baby at 14 and gave her up. I would love to get to know her and for my family to meet her, but none of them know about each other. How do I tell my daughter I gave up, I have a family, and how do I tell my family about my past? Oh, sweetheart. Listen, what's happened here is you're trying to be the yes man. You're trying to be the person that makes everybody happy. You're trying to protect everybody else's feelings and I can completely understand that. But you've got yourself in a bit of a fucking rut here. You've got yourself in a pickle because when we start telling lies, unfortunately, we start digging a fucking hole and it sounds to me like you're in a fucking 18 foot hole. The only thing you can do here is come clean. Sit your family down, sit your husband down. Maybe tell your husband before you tell your son so that you can get it all off your chest with your partner, your lifelong partner, the one who you're not supposed to have any secrets from. Tell him what happened when you were 14. Say, listen, I've got something to tell you. It's really important that I tell you and it's massive. And just tell him, when I was 14, I got pregnant. I had the baby, I gave her up for adoption. Fucking hell, fire Phyllis. She's anonymous, I don't know her name. Why the hell um, didn't you tell me? Well, I were ashamed, I were embarrassed, I thought it would go away. Whatever, whatever, explain it to him. Have that conversation with your husband so he's aware of it. Tell him, I started speaking to my adoptive daughter online. I'd love for her to meet you. But how can I do that? Because I've even not told her about you. Because I thought because I gave up for adoption, how can I tell her that my life moved on and now I've got a new family that she's not included in? You must be honest with your husband firstly. Once you've told your husband, once you've told your husband, then you can tell your son. Now be prepared for the questions. What's she like? Where she lived? Does she look like me? Why did you give her up? You're going to have to be um, very prepared for all the questions you're going to be asked from your husband and your son. Keep the contact up with your adopted, with your daughter who was adopted. Keep the contact up. When you start talking about maybe meeting, maybe meeting, because she may just want to like speak to you now and again and then move on. She may have contacted you because she needs to know who her real family is because of medical histories. We don't know if she actually wants you to start having a relationship in real life other than virtual. Carry on that conversation. You will know when the niche is, when the right time is to say, listen, Flower, I've got something to tell you. Why has she not already asked you if you've already got a family? I really do feel for you, but it's quite natural and quite normal for you to then say, 
I gave you up, I've never stopped thinking about you, I've thought about you every day, I'm so ashamed, I'm so embarrassed, be brutally honest with your feelings of how it made you feel and it's okay to let her know your feelings, she needs to know that, she needs to hear that and you also need to hear how it's made her feel knowing she was given up, so she may have her own questions but then follow that on with, however, you know, I pulled my life a little bit together I met somebody, we married, and I have a son. So I'm not saying that that's your brother, but I am saying that you do have a sibling. How do you feel about that? So your family, your husband and your son need to know exactly what happened when you were 14. Why? And you also need to be honest as to why you've lied and you shouldn't have lied and look at the predicament you're in. Just put your hands up and say, how the fuck have I done this? I don't know, but I have, and I'm willing to make it better. I'm sorry if you think I've lied to you, I haven't. I just thought I were protecting everybody and now I don't know what to do. Please help me. But also be honest with your daughter and tell her the same and say, listen, I wanted to tell you, but I didn't want to tell you because I, I didn't want you to think that I loved you any less or that I didn't think about you. I just thought, oh, well, that's gone now and I'll crack on. Just be honest. When we start keeping secrets like that, they become burdens. They, they, they sort of make us bitter and resentful and we hate ourselves for it. Um, so please, 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 honesty here is the best policy and the sooner, the better, honestly. The sooner, the better. And you will feel like a massive weight has been lifted off your shoulders. Your husband isn't gonna leave you because of what happened in your past. Your son's still your son and you're still his mum and you're probably just going to get a massive big hug off them because it must have been absolutely fucking terrifying to be pregnant at 14. Then to think, do I keep it, do I not keep it? You'll have had all that going on, you'll have been pushed one way or another and then to have that little baby and it to be taken away from you. So please, please, please also look after yourself while you come into terms with everything that's going on. Should you need any therapy? Should you need any counselling? Should you need a third party to speak to? Please, please don't feel ashamed anymore. You will not be the first and you won't be the fucking last. These things happen, okay? And as sad as they are, we've got to face them. We've got to face them full wide, eyes wide open and go into it with bare, brutal honesty. Your daughter that you gave up for adoption and your family now will respect you so much more. Okay, dokie, God bless her. God fucking bless her. Ain't that really sad though? Ain't that really sad? Because I reckon, I mean, I don't know this lady, it's all anonymous, but um, I reckon she just didn't know what was fucking going on and thought, how do I tell her? And it's, you know, you, you don't want her sat there, she's got in touch and thinking, oh, well, she's not even asked. She's gone on and had a fucking baby and she's married and she's happy, you know, and you don't want your family to, I don't know, just have that kind of secret. Your family needs to know good or bad. You need to be laid bare in front of your family. That's the only place really where you can be completely yourself, good days or bad days. And, they, you know, and they do need to know that. And I don't know why you never told your husband during courtship, engagement, marriage, whenever. Um, but yeah, um, tell him now, it's never too late. It's never too late. Um, and he may even say, ah, I understand. There may be some things that you don't know that, you know, how it's affected you, but it may, may just bring you a little bit more together. Um, it's a difficult thing that's happened to you. And I'm not saying you've done right. I'm not saying you've done wrong, but I wish you the best of luck with that. Hey, dear me. Right. Dear Auntie Nelly, my wife has changed now. She's going through the change. <laughs> She's irritable, isn't sleeping, has no desire to do anything and has absolutely no libido. She cries all the time and even said I have to sleep in spur room as I make her feel too hot. I'm really trying to be patient. But I cry as well now on my own as I no longer recognise my wife. She won't talk to me because she says I just don't understand and says that it's all right for me, but it's not. How can I be more supportive and help her? I love her so much. Oh, little love. I think sometimes us ladies, I'm guilty of it. When we are going through PMT, PMS, periods, uh, menopause, perimenopause, hot flushes, we're irritable, we're having a shitty day, there's not enough fucking chocolate on planet. We automatically wrap that up into ourselves 
and we don't really realise that anybody understands, especially not men. Men just don't get it and they just have such an easy life. And we do, it's a blame culture and we do do that. I'm guilty of it and I'm sure 77% of other women are. I've just pulled that statistic out of my head, it's not real. Um, so sit her down and say, listen, my gorgeous darling wife, I love you so much. You are my absolute world. You're going through the menopause. You're right. I don't fucking understand it. I've researched it online. I've looked at people's stories. Everybody experiences it in different ways. Tell me how you're experiencing it for me to understand it. I want to support you. I want to love you. I want to help you through this. Fuck me, we've been through enough and explained to her. Do you remember when we went through? Do you remember when we went through? What would you do if I had cancer and you didn't have cancer? Would you say, what? how would you feel if I said to you, fuck off, you can't help me because you've not got cancer. Be so brutal with her. Tell her, tell her how you feel and say, I know you're crying all the time and I don't know what to do. So because I don't know what to do, let's try and find exactly what's going on in order for me to try and help you and support you. And I'll tell you a little story. Before lockdown, uh, it might have been January time, I went to my gorgeous fiance's house and um, we'd had a beautiful Friday evening. It was absolutely lovely. Saturday came and I was reading a magazine in lounge and he was pottering about and I said to him, I said, oh, football's on. He said, yeah, yeah, I'm not too bothered. He is bothered about football. He fucking loves football. Bit of a football hooligan, if I'm honest. So I said, why don't you go upstairs and watch it? No, no, it's all right. I'll sit with you. I said, listen, I'm just reading a magazine. I said, go upstairs and watch your football. So off he fucks upstairs watching his football. I'm reading my magazine and out of nowhere, nowhere, I got this mad rush, hot flush. I started feeling really angry for no reason, no reason, nothing had changed. And in my head, somebody said to me, he's up there having a right nice time. Go and spoil it. So I did. So I marched up the fucking stairs like a bull in a china shop. And he's, I went in his bedroom and he was sat on the edge of the bed with a remote control watching his football. Because don't forget, 10 minutes earlier I said, why don't you go upstairs and watch your football? I really don't mind. And I really didn't mind 10 minutes ago. And he sat watching his football and I've gone in burst into tears and said, why do you even fucking invite me to come round to your house if you don't want to spend any fucking time with me? To which he looked at me and went, are you okay? And I went, no, I'm not fucking okay. I'm sat downstairs and you're sat upstairs. What the fuck's going on? What kind of relationship is this? To which he then stood up, put his remote control down, came over to me, put his arms round me and said, Antonella, do you want some jelly babies? To which I cried and said, yes, please. I really do want some jelly babies. And it was fine. And it was as simple as that. Because we communicate. We communicate. And he knew it wasn't about the football. It wasn't about the fact that he'd done something that I didn't agree with. It wasn't anything like that. It was him understanding my moods. My moods can go from absolutely fine and calm to what the fuck's going on i can't handle this ah! so it's about that communication okay and once i've got my jelly babies and i've sat myself down and washed my face i was absolutely fine and do you know what i'm not the first and i won't be the fucking last but god bless me and god bless my fiance i have got a very very understanding man because I communicate with him all the time. We communicate. I tell him, I'm fucking, I'm fucking furious today. Why? No reason. So he knows. So it's about understanding how her body is changing, how her mind is playing tricks on her, knowing what it is that she finds comforting. So if it's a case of making her a brew, or oh, she's a bit off, I'll make her a cup of tea, she'll like that. Letting her cry. Don't say to her, why are you crying? Because she won't have a fucking clue. Because we never do. We just cry for no reason. No reason at all. A 
and that is supportive. So you don't have to think about this big idea of how can I support her, what am I doing? It's about knowing that they're there for you. They know it's not you. They know it's not you for that five minutes. And they know that it will pass, but they're there at your side. So communicate that with her and tell her that you know, you know that when she's acting irritable or she's not making rational choices or she's crying for no reason or she hates you, she doesn't really, you know it's not her and that's what you're struggling with because she's never been like that. I'd have never been like that. I absolutely would never in a normal time before perimenopause would have said, go watch your football upstairs. I'd have thought, go and fucking watch your football upstairs. Get out from under my fucking feet. I loved it. But at that moment, I wasn't thinking straight. My body overcome with a big perimenopausal flush. I wasn't feeling too well and I just wanted to scream. So what did I do? I screamed at the closest person to me for no reason at all. And he understood it. And we laugh about it. We do laugh about it. But um, for me, it's Jelly Baby. So find what it is that would make your partner feel a little bit better in that moment. Have a cuddle after. Have a kiss. Make a nice tea, put something nice on telly and don't mention it again because believe me, quarter to nine the next day, it'll happen again. Ah! So, and if there's anybody on here who is watching who is either perimenopausal or, menopen or, or pe uh, menopausal or suffers with PMS or PMT, they'll know exactly, exactly what I am fucking talking about, okay? They'll know exactly what I am talking about. But at the time, at the time, you really do believe they haven't got a fucking clue and how dare they even try to understand something that their sex, because the male, will never understand. Because how dare they be male and not experience all this. So I get it. Totally get it. And I hope that, you know, you've seen this Sunday service and you get a little bit of relief from that, knowing that it's not just her. It's all of us. Camera's on reverse. It's on a reverse. So that is my right hand. But I think you're seeing it on the left hand because it's on a flip or whatever the friggin' hell it does. So yeah, put your hand up and say, me too, sister. If you've ever done something like that, which makes no sense at all. And after, when you're feeling that little bit better, I'm not drinking a glass of piss, it's Barocca. Um, it just, uh, yeah, you do. You just think, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? But thank God I've got a fiancé who understands and, um, yeah, rides it out with me. Rides it out with me. He, he deserves a fucking gold star at the moment. That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, put your comment. Me too, sister. I get it. Yes, my jelly babies are my CBD little gummies. You're absolutely right there. Dear Auntie Nell, I have already had two miscarriages and the grief put a huge strain on our relationship. Oh, heck. If it happens again, I don't know how we'll cope as a couple and it makes me feel less of a woman each time. My husband is 34 and I'm 33. I am now pregnant again, but I haven't told anybody because I don't want to disappoint. I don't want to be a disappointment and fear he will leave me if I miscarriage again. I am fair scared that I'm already miscarrying, but the doctor has reassured me I've not lost the baby. I wake up every night in such a mess with high anxiety, thinking I have, I need help, please help me. It's not me that needs to help you, sweetheart. You need to speak to your husband. You need to tell him and you need to be completely frank with him and you need to say, I've got some fantastic news because it is fantastic news. Massive congratulations. And you need to say, I'm expecting. I know this is wonderful news after our two um, um, recent miscarriages. I'm absolutely petrified of telling you this because... I'm frightened I'm going to miscarry again and not just that, not only lose another baby, but I'm frightened I'm going to lose you because you're going to be so disappointed and I can't carry your babies and you're going to leave me for somebody who can. Tell him, tell him, 
Tell him exactly how you're feeling. I can't help you, but your fucking husband can. But do you know why he's not helping you? Because he doesn't know. Because ain't none of us psychic. He doesn't know. And I am so sorry that you've got the fear of God in you when it could be third time lucky. It really could be. Keep seeing your doctor. Keep checking up. It doesn't matter if they think you're neurotic and I think I'm losing baby. Come in, we'll check. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Please, please, please make sure the professionals know at every moment if you think something's not right. But please involve your husband. You can't just sit there and hope. I'm not miscarrying now because I'm 20 weeks. It's time to tell my husband. You need that love. You need that support. He's there with you. He's been through it twice before with you. His grief is your grief. Your grief is his grief. He's not going to leave you, darling. He's going to be absolutely fucking over the moon. He might wrap you up in cotton wool and get on your bastard nerves a bit. But who wouldn't with the fear that you've got? Who wouldn't? Tell him. Tell him. And if, God forbid, God forbid, you do lose the baby and you do lose your relationship, it's not the end of the world, darling. It just wasn't meant to be. And your Auntie Nelly is making it sound like it's quite easy. But what's for you won't pass you. Never forget that. What's for you will not pass you. And those babies are meant to go to a better place. They've got jobs to do elsewhere. I'm a strong believer in our little angel babies are too good for this earth. And they've got bigger, more important, better jobs elsewhere. So that's where your babies are. But I will pray for you that this baby remains in the womb to term and you have a gorgeous, what we call a rainbow baby. But please, 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 please tell your husband immediately. Don't worry about calling the doctors every day. Don't worry about calling the receptionist. It's the job. It's what they do. They look after people. And if you need that guidance, that reassurance, you ring them. Okay? Okay, dokie. I don't think I'm doing too bad with my advice today. Do you? To say, I'm fucking knackered. <laughs> I'm absolutely knackered. I'm like an exhausted pigeon. That's how I feel. Oh, I hope, if anybody is watching and it's the first time here on Auntie Nelly's Sunday service, I hope to God you're enjoying it as much as I am. Because at the beginning of uh, Sunday service, I did say today more than ever for my mental health because we all know that I struggle with anxiety um when I'm feeling like I don't want to do this I don't want to do that those are the days I push myself extra because those are the days that I get a better feeling I know that I can do it I can and I will and that sort of sets me up for the day and for the week so me sort of giving in to my insecurities the voices in my head all the things that are being said to me, you can't do this, you're tired, you're going to slur your words, nobody wants to watch you, etc, etc, but that's for a different show. <laughs> um, those are the days where I feel that I can't give in and I won't give in, I can and I will, and I don't let the day run me, I run the fucking day, I run this what's in my head, it doesn't run me, and it's important, it's important to come and tell you that, because should you ever feel like that, that you've got to know about your mental health and your physical health and if I was truly exhausted today because of my physical health I'm not fucking stupid it's self-care and I know to look after myself because I ain't going back into hospital but today it's my mental health so today's the day you push yourself so make sure that you know the difference between your physical health and your mental health and today it was mental and I feel so good now half an hour in but actually i'm not shit at giving advice i do know what i'm doing fuck off voices fuck off insecurities we're smashing it aren't we <clears throat> i'll watch this video back later and think what the fuck did i even say anyway moving on dear auntie nelly we have a four month old baby i'm 27 and my partner is 28 i suggested to get her to, oh, I suggested he get up with her sometimes, but he makes excuses. 
Where are we now? I'm paying all the bills from my maternity pay. He says he's not giving me any money because he's saving for a special holiday. But he finds money to go on nights out. I love him, but I don't know what I want to, if I want to be with him anymore. Maybe this is just the baby blues, but our relationship has changed so much since I had the baby. Can you help? Okay, so mum has baby, dad's working full time. Maybe he's got to be up at six in the morning. He can't be up in the night with the baby. Get it. It's all about communicating, coming to a compromise, knowing your boundaries. But you're paying all the bills because of your maternity pay and his money, wherever the fuck he's getting that from because he hasn't said, he's saving for a fucking holiday. Never mind the fucking holiday. Never mind the fucking holiday. Whether you're together as a couple or what, you split your bills. Never mind holidays. You shouldn't have to pay for all the bills. If he lives in your house and you're putting food on the table and fucking milk on his cornflakes, where is his keep? Never mind these fucking smashing fucking Barbados five-star luxury fucking holidays. It's what's going on now. What time is it? The time is now. Don't bother looking at your bastard clock or the fucking calendar. What time is it? Now. The time is now. And now you need more help and more support. So not only are you paying all the bills, but you're doing all the parenting as well. Does he want any part of this baby's life that he's fathered? Does he? Okay, so he might not want to get up in the night and do the feeds. I don't know what he's doing in the day. But is there something he could do in the day? Could he take her out for an hour in pram while you have a snooze or have that lovely hot shower and wash your hair and maybe fucking paint your nails? What is he not doing? Because if you're paying all the bills and he's not even bothering parenting, what the fuck's he doing in your house? Fucking get him out. I'm not being funny, but what are you teaching this child as this child grows? That women have to carry all the weight and men can swan about like they fucking want and buy a new pair of speedos because they're going on a fancy holiday. Fuck that shit. Start as you mean to go on. He either fucking shapes up or ships out. It's as simple as that. Now, you don't have to go in with a sledgehammer approach because that's what I would do. But I would certainly have that very, very serious conversation with him and say, listen, Flower, I'm paying all the bills because you're saving for a holiday, which is all lovely, sweetheart. But my child, our child, she needs milk and she needs nappies. And believe me, they're not cheap babies. What are you going to do when your maternity pay runs out? What about childcare? Fuck that. Sounds like he's got his head in fucking clouds and he's fucking knocking down a peg or two. So have that conversation. Everything has to be 50-50 in a relationship. Everything. There will be times where you'll carry a bit more weight. There'll be times he carries a bit more weight. That's life. That's relationships. Rough, smooth, ups, downs, good, bad, sickness and in health. That's life. But we help each other out. And if he's not willing to help, don't say to me like you're going to be a bad single mum, really. Sounds to me like you've got it all under control. We out him. So pack his bags and fuck him off. Dear Auntie Nelly, I have been engaged for 16 years. 16? Christ. I'm 44 and my partner is 50. I mean, why did he even propose if he has no intention of wanting to marry me? I have picked a date several times and each time he has made excuses saying it's not convenient. <laughs> I don't know if I can wait any longer. I told him this is ridiculous for a long engagement. And he has said, well, it's just a piece of paper. It won't change anything. I have recently booked a wedding venue. Oh, excuse me, for us to see. But he says I can go alone as he is working. How do I make him see that if he doesn't marry me, I'm off? I don't know you've waited 16 years. Every time you bring a wedding date up, he goes, oh no, that's convenient, that's not convenient. It's a fucking wedding, it's your wedding, what do you mean it's not convenient? Right, I have a very, very sneaky suspicion, now I'm not set it peg, I don't think he wants to get married, because he keeps saying, oh it's just a piece of paper. Well if it's just a piece of paper, why ask you to marry him? So ask him that, have you asked him that, when he's saying... Well, it's just a piece of paper. Why put a fucking ring on it then if it's just a piece of paper? Now, do you really, 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 really want to get married? Or do you just want to get married because you've been waiting all this time and so it's a bee in your bonnet and I will get fucking married. I'll make him marry me. 
Why do you want a man to marry you who don't want to marry you? Why do you want to walk down a fucking aisle to somebody who's not right asked about it and it's just a piece of paper? Whether we're in boyfriend, girlfriend, fiancé, fiancé, husband, wife, whatever relationship we're in, husband, husband, boyfriend, boyfriend, whatever, we've both got to be on the same page. And it doesn't sound to me like you are and you've wasted 16 years of your life waiting for this man to get suited and booted and say, I do. I'd get his suits, get his boots, pack him in the bag and say, I fucking don't. Sometimes you've got to really, really give him a hard, sharp shock. So no more looking at wedding venues. Take the fucking ring off. And if he says, where's your ring? I don't feel very fucking engaged. To be engaged is to be getting married and we're not our way. So we're not engaged, flower. There's your bags off your fuck. I want to get married. Me, personally, I want to get married. And if you don't want to marry me, that's fine. I'd rather marry a man that wants to marry me or not get married at all because you don't want to marry me. And that's what you have to do. Um, if you're engaged to be married and there's no marriage coming, what are you fucking doing? 16 bastard years waiting for him to say, uh, no, it's not convenient. It's not convenient. I mean, are you sure he's not even fucking married somewhere else and he's got two families and that's why I don't want to fucking marry you because it'd be, is it bigamy? Is it called bigamy? Is it bigamy? Fuck me. There's all sorts running through my head. So why you have gone on with this for fucking 16 years? I will never know. Me and my fiancé plan to look at our ved wedding venue in March this year. We got engaged this year. Uh, it got cancelled because of COVID. Okay, it got postponed because of COVID. I keep saying cancelled. Uh, change your mindset now. Change your mindset. Um, and then in May, um, we were going to go and look at wedding venues again, etc. Once again, it got postponed because we couldn't actually get to where we were supposed to go. Um, so yeah, everything for me is slightly on hold, on hold. But there will be a wedding because we both want a wedding, both of us. We both know why things are postponed. We both know why we may have to look at different venues. We both know why we may have to pick a different date. But if you don't know why, then what are you fucking doing? And that flower pot has been today some disservice. But when I'm not tired, I actually do talk some sense. Um, and I just wanted to read something to you that I actually wrote, um, and I'm quite, quite, I think it's quite important, uh, to read this out to you because I do get a lot of dear Auntie Nellie's about relationship advice. Uh, where will you live Nellie when you're married? Jamie Hindle says, I will live in the Ribble Valley. My partner lives in the Ribble Valley and he doesn't want to leave the Ribble Valley. I'm not too asked about where I live as long as I live with him and we're happy. So talking of relationships, we've had quite a few relationship issues today and I get quite a lot in my inbox. So I'm just going to read this to you. So there's some important things to remember when you are married or in a serious relationship. Don't ever assume that your partner feels loved, number one. Number two, date nights are an absolute must. Doesn't matter if you go out or just stay in. Make that one night for you too. Number three, talk openly about what you want to change in your relationship. It's really important to keep communicating. Also, learn each other's love language because we don't always perceive love the same way. So you might have Ted who brings you a black coffee every morning, but then you've got Doris next door who said, oh, well, my Brendan buys me flowers every Friday and you're thinking fucking hell I wish my Ted would Ted doesn't buy flowers every Friday but he'll bring you a cup of tea every morning do you know what I mean so it's about learning each other's love language because we don't always perceive love the same way and this might be a bit controversial but it's okay to go to bed mad sometimes it's okay I think you do, shouldn't sit up all night forcing a resolution Sleeping on it sometimes is the best solution and it does help. So that's contrary to popular belief, but I do think that going to bed mad sometimes actually goes in your favour. When you get into a fight, and I don't mean fisticuffs, I mean into an argument, don't just say I'm sorry, say what you were sorry for. So don't just say, oh yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. What are you sorry for? So say, I am sorry that I... 
but I did that because and I will try not to. So always back up your sorries. You know, it's so important to apologise, but what for, for what? Anybody can say I'm sorry. It's just two words. Okay, so all relationships, I don't give a fuck who you are. You could be J-Lo, you could be fucking Beyonce, you could be Victoria Beckham, anybody. All relationships get boring sometimes and all couples will go through a boring stage. It's normal, it's normal, but it will fade. It won't be like that forever. It's all about riding the, love, uh, the roller coaster of love. The time where you're going through the boring stage, that's the time you'll have to put in the most effort, okay? Now, some days you will have to pull more weight than your partner and vice versa. That's very normal. And it's important to always check in on each other's mental health because, once again, people don't always perceive to be all right. Just don't assume people are all right. So it's so important. And you know what? It's okay to go to couples counselling. It's okay to go to therapy. It doesn't mean the two of you are going to end or, you know, you're failing at your relationship. It just means that you give a shit enough to make sure that you're not and that you're going to try with all your gusto to make it work. Talk about money. A lot of couples don't talk about money. They don't talk about money. They let, you know, they, they let things build and build and build and there's lots of problems in the relationship and nobody knew it was about money because they didn't discuss it. So talk about money. Talk about your financial goals as a couple, as an individual. Let your partner know. Let your partner know what you expect from them and vice versa. And for an hour of the time you're together, whether it be date night or a day when you're having your tea, when you're together, for a complete hour... Just turn your phones off, turn all social media off and just talk to each other. Just talk. It could be about what Alfred was selling on fruit and veg stall, but just talk to each other for an hour of every day that you're together. If more, if you can do it more, brilliant, but, but try, okay? And ask questions like, and this is going to feel really odd for people who've never done it before, and I get it, but ask questions like, what do you need to see more from me? How can we understand each other better? And most importantly, be kind to each other. Love each other. Fight to the very end for each other. If it, she says it's black and you know it's white, but she's saying it's black, fucking back her up while it's black and tell her when you get home. Fucking white that, you dickhead. But always fight for each other. Be there for each other. Love each other. Be kind. And remember that love is never easy. It isn't, but it's one hell of a fucking ride. And fuck me, it's beautiful and so worth it. So I'm going to end today's Sunday service with that, that I actually penned not long ago, trying to give a little bit of that advice. And I don't fucking know it all. I don't profess to. I fuck up on a daily basis lately with my very many balls. But we're all human, aren't we? And it is about saying, I'm sorry that I did that. A mad rush come over me and I heard you having a good time and I didn't know why you were having a good time and I wanted to have a good time but I weren't having a good time so I come and shout it at you. Explain why you're sorry. So there we go. That's been today's Sunday service. Thank you. Thank you so much for loving, liking and sharing this video and joining me. It's been nothing but a fucking pleasure. It really has. And it's really turned my frown upside down. I'll see you all soon in the week with some new reviews, because reviews is what I do. I buy and try so you don't have to. And all going well. See you Wednesday night for night time with Ellie. Whatever you do with your Sunday, may it be a blessed day. And I'll see you all very, very soon.